Welcome to my studio, of course. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys, which is why I wanted to do an episode on this. A lot about my materials, a lot about the workspace in general. This is the part that I know you, a lot of you probably haven't seen if you haven't been following me for a very long time. Uh, this is my workspace. This is what is next to my easel every day at work when I am working on any of my paintings. So uh, let's talk about the paint. So I use a lot of acrylics. And a lot of you asked me, heavy bodies, um, soft bodies, do I use fluids? I know a lot, a lot of you know I use fluids, but I use other stuff too. So this is, uh, these are golden open acrylics, more of a heavy body. I've tried them for a long time. You can see I have quite a collection. This is about a third of what I have. Golden open bodies, I'm not a fan of. They don't cover as well. Um, it takes a lot of layers to get what you want, which is why I found that I struggled with them. So, although I encourage, and I'm gonna tell you guys throughout this video, although I encourage trying all of these paints, um, this is one that I did step away with because I didn't really like them personally. I love golden, I didn't like the open acrylics, but I encourage you to give them a shot because one thing that I did get from using these paints is I learned a lot from them. And really that's the whole point of anything with this is you have to be able to teach yourself some lessons and sometimes it comes at the cost of using materials that you don't end up liking. So, golden open acrylics, not a big fan of. Heavy body acrylics, I don't actually have anymore because I've totally gone away from heavy body acrylics because I found that when I used mediums to thin my heavy body acrylics, I found that they just were kind of weird. I didn't like them. They didn't cover as well. There was a lot more maybe opaqueness. I could cover the canvas a lot better if I started with fluids or soft body acrylics. So I like starting with something a little bit softer rather than starting with heavy bodies and then using these. This one is a, this is an airbrush medium. There's another thing. I used airbrush for some time and I didn't really like it. I have airbrush colors right here, and I guess you can achieve, what I found is you can achieve the same results using paintbrush or your fingers or even sponges to get those nice smooth effects. So airbrush, although I learned a lot, which was important, I found that they weren't very important uh, to me. I didn't really have a use for it after a while, so I stepped away from it. So airbrush was another thing I stepped away with. Okay, so I'm, I know I'm going fast, but... I want to weed through the stuff that I don't use anymore so I can teach you guys the most about what I do use now. So airbrush, um, let's get back to the heavy body. So acrylics, heavy body acrylics. I use slow, blot, slow dry blending mediums. This is a fluid matte medium. Oh, I have some other stuff somewhere, one over there. I just found that by mixing the fluid acrylics or the soft body acrylics with water, I could pretty much get the same workable properties rather than mixing my heavy bodies and thinning them down to the point where they didn't really cover well. And when they got too thin, it just didn't really bind well either. It didn't have that, that, that property that we want paint to have after a while. So I stepped away from heavy body acrylics and I use fluid acrylics and soft body acrylics. All right, so let's keep going, narrow this down. So you see, I have a lot of paints here. Let's talk about the paints before we talk about materials. One more thing, I know I still am going fast, but one more thing I wanna talk about is I have Prismacolor brush tip markers and I have Gamblin oil, oil colors here. And I still use the oil colors, but I use them now for after I finish a painting, say I get to a painting, uh, I get to a point in the painting where Maybe I struggle and I get stuck with it. Well, we all know that we can work these a lot longer than acrylics. We can blend them because of that slow drying ability with these, uh, the slow drying properties with the oil paints. So sometimes when I finish or get to a certain point in my acrylic painting where I'm, get, where I'm feeling like I'm stuck, I'll switch to oils. I will let my acrylic painting dry and then I will spray it with crystal clear acrylic coating, which is just a acrylic spray. And once this dries, I paint oils over the top to get kind of those, those maybe I want certain colors to be more vibrant or want to smooth out a certain area. That's what I'll do. So 
acrylic spray. I use Krylon products a lot. There's Kamar varnish. That's a pretty popular varnish. I like it. I like anything glossy. Of course, when I draw my design on canvas, before I start the paints, I spray it with a workable fixative so I don't lose my drawing. Then I'll paint acrylics over it. Sometimes I'll spray it with acrylic spray and then finish with oil colors. I love gambling. They're just a little bit cheaper, but they're really great too. So you don't really sacrifice quality for the price. So that's that. Of course, I've got some Prismacolor pencils. I've also used pencils a lot. I moved away from those as well. Markers, I got to the point where I was using markers and then pencils and kind of mixed media the two together and then even added acrylics over the top of drawings that I finished with markers or pencils um, and I got away from that. The point being that I wanted to tell you all of this thus far is that you have to be able to experiment with different mediums. A lot of you keep asking me what mediums I use, what paints I use, what brands I use. My suggestion to you is try them all. Buy one tube, buy two tubes. Just if you've ever seen a medium at the store, I encourage you to at least try it because I promise you'll learn something. And that's the whole point is that every little failure, every little tiny thing that you might learn, it's all things that you can put in your toolbox. And eventually you can apply that to the greater picture, which is what you find that, that really works for you. So please try everything, try the markers, try the pencils, try the oils, buy one of each, one color each, if that's all you wanna do. Just give it a try because I promise you'll learn something. And that's how I've been able to really grow as an artist over the years. So I wanted to share that with you. Now, let's get to what I use currently, what I use all the time. I use Golden Fluid Acrylics. I also use Liquitex soft bodies. And I know I've probably mostly used Golden Fluid Acrylics because I've just been on a kick lately. And that's kind of how I work as an artist. There's certain times I might go six months where I only use Golden Fluid Acrylics. Then I might try maybe one of the Liquitex soft bodies. And then I go, oh, I kind of like some of that. So I might try some more of these. And I've got a lot of different colors here, I know. Um, but let's talk about the difference between the two. Well, I would say, that golden fluid acrylics are not quite as opaque. They don't quite cover as well as the Liquitex soft body. That being said, because they're more of a liquid, of more of a fluid base, we can mix these colors together and get those nice smooth transitions easier. So what I'm finding, and I'm still learning and growing as an artist, but what I'm finding is that when I use fluid acrylics for areas such as the nice smooth sky, maybe I have a transition from gold all the way from orange to violet and then to blue these really help me then when i move to more textured areas maybe the foliage maybe a cabin an animal i kind of like the ability to cover things faster and i can even paint maybe maybe if i want to finish something and i want some texture to my painting i like using the liquitex soft body so really i think both companies make a fantastic paint and i am on a kick lately where i'm using about half and half it seems like, especially on my larger, more detailed paintings. So let's get to the colors that I use. Now the colors that are my favorite for golden are primary yellow, burnt sienna, carbon black, Prussian blue, and I'll have these in the description below, but I just want to run through them real quick. Quinacridone red, quinacridone red, titanium white, and primary cyan, green gold, raw, raw umber. Raw umber is not something that you would have to have, but I do use it, I do like it. And that's about it. So if I were to recommend colors, I think that's about it, yeah. So if I were to recommend some colors, and one more color I might recommend, obviously we don't have a really green here, is permanent green light. I like permanent green light. So that kind of covers just the base of what you need. Oh, I apologize, naphthol red. Got so many things here, I don't even know. So that's pretty much all the colors that I use. And as far as the golden fluid acrylics go. Now, 
One key color that I absolutely love, I've always been using it, whether I'm on Liquitex or Golden, whether I'm on a kick using either or, kind of, you know, mostly in my painting process, I always have Cerulean Blue Hue from Liquitex. I've got a bigger jar here just to show how much I use of this. Blues, I struggle with a lot. I struggle with blue. And you might struggle with blue yourself. And what I found is that you can stick with one yellow and you can be fine. You can have one red and you can be fine. But when you come to blues, you always maybe seem to struggle not getting the right hue of blue. Maybe your blue sky isn't what you really wanted it to be. Maybe if you try mixing a violet and you're using blue and red, it kind of turns out muddy, darker than what you wanted. What I found is that some blues work and some blues don't. And it's key to have a range of blue. And so I always, no matter what, I have primary cyan, Prussian blue, and cerulean blue hue. These are the three blues that I rely on because not any single blue will work for me. I always have three different blues versus, let's say, the yellow. I could go single-handedly on this primary yellow and never need another type of yellow ever. And that's just what I've found for myself anyways. And as far as the Liquitex colors go, these are really kind of the core colors that I need. But one of the other blues that I use a lot is light blue permanent. You can mix primary cyan with white and get something similar to light blue permanent, but what I found is sometimes it's not as vibrant. And I like starting with a color that's very vibrant like this, this light blue permanent. So even a fourth blue, I love having all these blues. Now, the rest of the colors here for Liquitex that I use just to take shortcuts in my work to maybe save some time would be something like this cad red, sorry, cad orange. Um, we have other colors that are sap green. This is, uh, I believe both companies make this. Another color is yellow light Hansa, which is a little bit brighter. Um, just shortcuts, really. This is light portrait pink. And we've got just some various other colors, really not super important. Another one I use a lot is brilliant yellow green. So if you were gonna keep adding colors, it really just depends on what you're painting what your objective is in any particular painting. So uh, just don't worry about the colors beyond what I've shown here, but do experiment. If you have an extra $5, try a new color you've never tried. I promise you'll learn something. And again, that's the whole point. We wanna learn something every day, and that's how we will get better as an artist over a long scale of time. So let's talk about my palette. Those are my colors. Here we have just, this is a piece of hardboard. And I'll show you what it might look like brand new. We have an ampersand hardboard here, and it doesn't have to be ampersand hardboard, it's my favorite, but we have an off-brand right here that I use for a palette, and I cut this one in half, and I reuse it because I like to have a nice clean surface. You notice how this isn't white, it's not black, it's a nice in-between, like a mid-hue kind of a mid-tone, and it's very neutral. It's got a little bit of color, but it's neutral. Could be gray if you wanted to, but I like something in between because I want my whites to show up and I want my blacks to show up. So if I have a white palette, it's gonna make me hard to see that white. I like to see how white things are. So I have a, something that's mid-tone. And then I take this plastic wrap. This is just gift wrap that you can buy. And I just tape on a piece. And when I'm done, I've got a fresh palette and I can put on a new piece. That's what I use for a palette. And I just like this more than maybe a store-bought palette because I haven't found something quite like this. It's just, this is all you need. Just a nice clean board. You could flip it over, start using this clean side. And I've used this for a long time now. And I've only got some color on this. I could probably scrape it off. But anyways, that's my palette. So let's keep going. Let's talk about oil paint. What do you, so I've got some oil paint. And yes, I do still use some oil paint, of course. Try to clear this up for you a little bit. Whoops. Okay, so you can see underneath here, we have a piece of glass. This is a glass window. And I've got some colors on here. I have a glass scraper, so when paint's dry, I can scrape them off. But we have a glass window here, and I love using, it's, it's a big piece. It goes from here all the way over to here and I'll clear this off when I'm gonna use oil paints, maybe you just use this part here. And I mix my oil paints on the glass because of course, oil paints are kind of messy. 
Um, I just prefer to mix them on a big surface because with oil paints, I do use different mediums. I use Galkide and some other mediums here that we have. And so I like to have kind of a nice large surface when I'm working with oil paints. And of course, the window has a lip on it. So if I spill mineral spirits, which I undoubtedly do, I will and I do always, um, it won't run off my palette. It just makes things easy to clean. So I use a glass palette for my oil paints. Okay, so we've got, oh, there's nothing under there. Got a tea ruler. Of course you need a ruler. Let's keep talking about, let's talk about my brushes. So I've got a couple stands of brushes here. Now the brushes I use are really nothing particular. I have all different types of brands. I have all different types of styles. There is no one brand that I love. There is no one style that I love. Um, a brush like this, I probably rarely use. I just, I don't know, I don't use them. Uh, brushes like this, I might use for very large paintings. Occasionally, maybe applying some gesso to a, new bot, a, a newly bought canvas. Um, but these are my new brushes. So these are brushes I haven't used yet. And I have just some, this is just that flower foam you can buy at places like Walmart, any place really, craft store. And you can just jam the, uh, the paintbrush into it like that and it just holds my, my paintbrushes and I can see what I have. So that's pretty much what I use to store my new brushes. But the brushes that I use the most would be this one by Princeton. And this one is called a Lunar Mop. So it's kind of thin on one side, kind of thick on the other side. It's good for blending larger areas like skies. And then I also use, this is an artist, artist Loft. This is just a filbert brush, kind of a medium-sized filbert. I use those a lot, and then I know you guys see me use these round blenders by Princeton. But Artist Loft always also makes a round blender, and they call it a scrumbler. So we have a scrumbler brush and a round blender brush. They're pretty much the exact same thing. They are the exact same thing. But I love these round brushes for blending areas, maybe just fine tuned blending. So maybe small blending. Um, so yeah, I like those brushes. Let's keep going here. What else, what other brushes do I like? Sometimes I use, these are Eclipse from Windsor & Newton. I love the Eclipse brushes from Windsor & Newton, especially for oil paints. And I use kind of just maybe some medium-sized filbert. This is a double thick filbert. But the point being, when you look at the brushes I use the most, they're dirty, they're in a big pile. I don't care about them because they're cheap. I don't buy expensive brushes. I buy brushes that work for me. And when they get bad, which they rarely do get bad because, get these out of the way. If they do get bad, what I found is that sometimes they get a curve to them. Maybe they start to fray, but that fray creates a unique texture. So maybe I could add some cool foliage textures to some bushes. So I like when they get old and dirty because they have very unique properties, stuff that you can't just buy brand new. So I use these brushes literally until they have no more hairs. So what I want to get across is don't stress out on the types of brushes or what brushes. Just experiment with all different types of brushes. Start cheap, start very cheap. Go to the cheapest section I would recommend in your art store. Buy a bunch of different ones maybe you haven't used. Start learning about them, find one that you really like and maybe buy a more expensive brush from a different company, but maybe it's similar style. So I would recommend just experimenting with all different types of brushes because I found there really is no single brand, single type of brush. Um, it's all just marketing for different companies. So I use all types of brushes and nothing really is too important to me. I, if a brush was discontinued, which these are the only two I have left. These are my favorite liner brushes. And this is American Painter by Lowell, Lowell Cornell. And these are the number one liner brushes. And these are my favorite liner brushes. They discontinued them. They don't make them anymore. I'm so sad. But I found new liner brushes that work for me. So now I use 
different liner brushes and I can pretty much do the same thing with them. So don't stress out about different types or brands of brushes. Just keep trying new stuff and you'll eventually find stuff that works. So let's keep talking about the surface. Now I use uh, these 16 by 20 inch canvas and this is a Blick Premier brand canvas I believe. And this is a one and a half inch thick. I like the thick ones so they don't warp over time. And this has kind of a medium standard texture, but these are just store-bought canvas. And I can get pretty much the same result as I can by using a very, very expensive canvas. Um, really, for me, it's just, it just comes down to the type of texture. So if this has a really thick texture, I'll apply a layer of gesso and then I'll sand it. It'll be nice and smooth and I can get the, the desired effect that I'm looking for. So there's nothing really special about the canvases that I use. The one thing I do look for in a canvas, and I encourage you to look for it as well, is I always go back stapled because if something ever happens to the frame of your canvas, they can remove the staples and they can restretch it on a new frame. So I always want back stapled because it gives you the option to restretch it if you have to. Now another thing that I look for in my canvases is that comes with these little keys. And if we put in the key in the corner and there'll be one that goes here and then there'll be one that goes this way. And when we push these keys into the corners, it starts to pull the frame apart and that tightens up the canvas. So if the canvas ever, be ever becomes loose over time, it comes with these package of keys and I'll install these before I sell the painting so that I can put pressure into the corners and make sure this is nice and tight. And I can also take a water bottle and spray the back with some water, rub it in, and that'll tighten up the canvas even more. But I do like canvases that come with these keys or at least have the holes in the corners of the frame to put keys. You could make your own keys if you wanted to, but I like the ones that come with them. So that's just the standard canvas that I use, but this is not my favorite canvas. I do use these a lot, but what I love is rolled canvas. And the reason I like rolled canvas is because it's cheaper than buying linen, but this is pretty much the same texture. And so you, there's a lot of companies out there that sell all different types of canvas. And they sell, this one is by Fredericks and it's called Knickerbocker. And it's very, very fine weave canvas. And it's a lot, it's about the same texture as a nice like Belgian linen canvas, uh, but it's a lot cheaper and it's super smooth, but it has a little bit of texture. So it does grab that paint off the brush and I can make beautiful transitions with this, much more smooth than I could with a store-bought canvas like I just showed you. And what I do is I take this canvas and I take a PVA glue and this is an pH neutral acid free glue so it's archival and I water this down about 50-50 water glue and I add it, I paint it on to my hardboard and then I glue the canvas right to the top and I push it out nice and smooth. I take like a piece of wood and I really smooth it out and I'll paint right on that. So those larger paintings that you see where I've only posted time lapses of them so far, but I'm working on sharing more of that with you. Um, but those larger paintings that you see that I have tons of details, they're super realistic, a lot of stuff going on. This is this Frederick Knickerbocker campus that I use. There's other companies that make the same type of stuff, but it's just a really fine woven canvas, much finer than you would ever be able to find in most arts and craft stores. And I buy it by the roll and glue it on. So that's my canvas. Now I always have a rag, of course, washing my hands off. I blend with my fingers a lot. I'll have this rag to wipe my fingers off. Now let's talk about my cup of water. So again, nothing fancy here, but what I have here is a mug and I've got water in the mug and then I've also got water in the bowl. So what happens as I keep painting and I hate going to the bathroom or going to the sink and having to change the water out frequently. So when I'm painting, I kind of get in the zone and I don't want to leave my workspace. And of course we don't like working with dirty water. So in the middle, after I get done painting and I've got paint on my brush, I'll mix it in the middle cup and I'll tap that out. So I've got 
the cup in the middle is gonna be super dirty. It's gonna have a lot of paint in it because that's where I'm washing those paint covered brushes off in. But then after I wash it in the middle cup and tap it out, then I give it a final rinse in the water in the outside bowl. So it's got a, like a two wash face. So the bowl of water stays clean and only the cup gets dirtied with, wa with paint. So I use kind of these, just a bowl and a mug, dirty paint, and then I clean it off so that I've got nice clean water to work with. So if I ever want some water to mix with my paints, I can always go down the bowl and I've got some clean water there. So that's just something I use. You could use just two mugs too as well, but that's what I have here. And I don't know if there's anything else to talk to. That's pretty much it. I like to keep it fairly simple. I know I covered a lot of this other stuff in the beginning, um, but I don't use a lot of this stuff, but I wanted you just to know that I do experiment a ton. And there's a lot of stuff I do off camera that I don't share because they're failures. I don't learn a lot unless I fail. Here's a painting I got really mad at the other week. I just broke it in half. Sometimes you gotta take your anger out to improve. So I chalked it up as a failure. I learned, marked off my uh, experiences and put them in my toolbox and I'll take that to the next painting, move on. So I don't stress out about anything that goes wrong. Things do go wrong all the time. They go wrong for me. I'm still learning as an artist, but I wanted to share this all with you guys. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I could talk about for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, but I wanted to just get the conversation started. I wanted to show you what I use, and now I wanna ask you, What's your biggest question about workspace? What's your biggest question about materials? What's your biggest question about paints? What's your biggest question about blending paints? Now I wanna do more videos in the future where I talk about blending colors and I will do a color video soon, but I just wanted to get the conversation started. Now I wanna ask you guys questions. What's your biggest question? And I'll be happy to answer it. So please leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Please subscribe for many more great videos to come. I'm sharing this all with you guys and we're gonna continue with this. So until next time, happy painting everybody and we'll see you on another episode of Paint Like a Pro. And remember, be sure to follow me on Instagram and tag me with hashtag Paint Like a Pro. I wanna see what you guys come up with, anything at all. So be sure to follow me there. Thanks again for watching, we'll see you next time.